Okay, so today we are going to multiply decimals. So I'm going to show you two different ways how to do this. The first one, we're going to follow these three different steps here. So we have 6 and 8 tenths times 2 and 1 tenth. So number one says make an estimate first. So I'm going to go ahead and look at this first one, and I have 6 and 8 tenths, and I'm going to say that's pretty close to 7. I'm going to go ahead and write 7. And then 2 and 1 tenths is going to be really close to 2. So when I multiply them together, I get 14 as my estimate. So we're going to use that number in a little bit to help us. So now we have to multiply the whole number. So I'm going to go ahead and take 6 and 8 tenths. And I'm going to turn that into 68. And then I'm going to multiply 2 and 1 tenths. And I'm going to make that into a whole number as 21. I'm going to go ahead and multiply. So when you're done and you add them up, I have 1,428. So when I multiply my whole numbers, I get 1,428. If I'm using my number 14 as my estimate to help me place my decimal point, I'm going to look at this number 1428. And I'm going to go ahead and place my decimal point right here because that would make it the closest to my estimate. So if I'm done estimating and I use my estimate from number one to place my decimal point, my answer is going to end up being 14 and 28 hundredths. So we're going to go ahead and use this method for the next problem as well. All right, so we have 12 and 6 tenths times 2 and 75 hundredths. So we're going to go ahead and make an estimate first, um, and we can say that it's close to 12 or it's close to 13. You can say 13. And 2 and 75 hundredths, that's going to be close to 3. So when I multiply those together, 39. That's going to be my estimate. So when I'm done, my answer is going to be close to 39. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use my eraser tool. And I'm just going to erase really quickly these decimal points. And so when I go to multiply, I'm going to act like they're not there. And I'm going to get my answer. And then I'm going to go ahead and place my decimal point in when I'm done. Okay, so I went ahead and did the multiplication, and I ended up with... Okay, so I went ahead and did the multiplication, and I got my answer, which was 34650. So if you look before, when we did our estimation, we did 13 times 3, and we got 39. So if my estimate is 39, I'm going to go ahead and place my decimal point and the spot that makes the most sense mathematically, which would be 34. So my answer ends up becoming 34 and 650 thousandths. All right, now I'm going to show you a second way to answer problems um, that are decimals with multiplication. So what I'm going to do first is look at these numbers here, and I'm going to count how many places are behind my decimal point. So for here, I have 1, 2, and 3, and down at the bottom, 4 and 5. So I like to kind of take that number, and I'm going to put a 5 up here, and I'm going to circle it. Now what I'm going to do is rewrite my problem with the numbers and I'm going to multiply them, and then when I'm done, I place my decimal point at the end. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. So if I were to rewrite my problem, I'm going to do 73 times 2. So my answer that I get is 146. So now what I have to do is take my decimal point from the very end 
and I'm going to move it five times. One, two, three, four, five. Fill in all of those spaces with my zeros, and then you will have your answer. All right, I'm now going to come down to our fourth problem here. And I'm going to go ahead and do that method that we just did. So I'm going to count how many numbers are behind the decimal point in both numbers here. So I have one, two, and three numbers. So I'm going to put a three up here, and I'm going to circle it. And so now, if I go to rewrite my math problem, I'm going to write four, zero, seven. So I take out my decimal points, multiplied by 53. And so this just becomes another multiplication problem um, that we've practiced often. And so we're going to go ahead and do this math problem. Okay. Don't forget your placeholder zero. And then go ahead and add those two products. And so now I have this answer. I have 21,571. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and look up at that number that I had circled from the very beginning, and it was 3. So I'm going to go ahead and place my decimal point always from the back, 1, 2, and 3, so that my answer ends up being 21 and 571 thousandths. Now if you're looking at that and we wanted to try the estimate way that we did in the beginning of this video, okay, you would look at your products or your um, numbers over here where I have four and five. I have four and seven hundredths and five and three tenths. So if I wanted to estimate, I would keep that at a four and also multiply that, keep that at a five, which would give me an estimate of 20. So again, I could use that second method of placing my decimal point where it makes the most sense from my estimate. All right, and so what I have for you now are three practice problems in your lesson practice. So if you wanna go ahead and pause your video and do the problems, and then I will give you the answers afterwards. So go ahead and pause and then check your work. All right, and here are your answers. So go ahead and check your work. In the boxes, I put how many numbers were behind the decimal point. So if you wanna go ahead and check that, and then make sure when you move your decimal, you are always moving from the very back to get your answer, and then putting a zero in front of your decimal point.